Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for being with us today. Um, we are broadcasting live from uh, Park City, Utah, where I am, and New York City. And Z-Way, I'm going to get it wrong, but where are you? New York City as well. New, New York City as well. So welcome. Thank you for being here today. Big shout and thank you to the Family Office Insights community for being so attentive and participating in our webinars since COVID. And uh, as many of you know, we've done two in-person New York City events for uh, pitches like we did prior to COVID. And so we're going to do that going forward um, at piecemeal. We're going to take it easy and see how it goes. Um, masks and COVID passes as, as, as best we can. Um, so we're, uh, as you know, we can't hear or see you, but you are participating virtually and we welcome and uh, encourage questions as we go along. So feel free to put uh, uh, your questions in the chat box or the Q&A and we'll get to as many as we can uh, as we go along here today. Um, David has been on the docket to uh, talk to us about his company, and so we're we uh, are certainly happy to have him. Finally, it's mostly our fault because we had a couple of false false starts on our end, but we're excited to have him. He's also got super interesting uh, uh, opportunity here, way beyond my skis in terms of the the technology and the science, but um, one that you're going to easily understand once you see it, and and. Uh, see the value of what's going on. He's also voted pretty heavily with his own checkbook, which is always encouraging. So really, really cool science, um, advancing things that are currently uh, of interest to us in, in the COVID environment in some way or another. So I think you'll find it all very interesting. For the record, we're recording this. We're gonna post it to the Family Office Insights YouTube channel and uh, uh, in a couple of days. And so as you see the presentation, if you feel there are others uh, that might be interested in hearing uh, what you're hearing today um, in your network or community, please feel free to uh, share the YouTube channel link with them, or you're going to be in, have an opportunity to connect directly with David and company uh, post-webinar. So with that, thank you for being here. David, please take it away. Thank you so much, Arthur. So I'm David Longo. I'm the CEO and founder of Ordeos, and I'm joined by Zue Liang, my director of R&D. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself quickly, Zue? Hi, everybody. I'm Zue. I did my PhD and postdoc at Imperial College London, focusing on epigenetics. After that, I moved into translational research and drug development at GSK and later at New York Triad area, focusing on antibody discovery research and oncology cell therapy. And as for my background, I was a computational mathematics undergrad. I was always the kid in high school driving around a robot with a PlayStation controller. Uh, I also ran a network security challenge lab in high school for 3,000 students that was reviewed by Kevin Mitnick. After math, my math major, I did what all math majors do, and I started a music company. Uh, that music company focused on a cappella music, vocal music exclusively, and we became the eighth largest recording studio by revenue in the country. After we had won all the awards that we could win and all of my groups won all the competitions that they could win, uh, I decided to go back to school. I did biotech, a biotech master's at Harvard and an AI graduate certificate, a graduate degree at um, Stanford, and I also did entrepreneurship at MIT, where I met my co-founder, Dr. Ulo Palm, who spent 30 years in the industry at companies like Sharing Plow, Novartis, Allergan, and now Vaccinity. With that, uh, I can get started telling you about Ordeos. Ordeos is a coined term, meaning to bring order to the chaos. We are a lead design and optimization company that custom designs proteins with machine learning. We're currently raising our, raising our seed extension round for $3 million. And we'll, I'm excited to tell you about this opportunity. As we see the current state of drug discovery, it's as if you're going to buy a suit for an interview, but you can only shop in a kid's thrift store. Nothing fits and you're lucky to get one decent option. This process currently takes four years and $580 million. 
And the reason it's so hard to get something that fits is because you're starting from a predetermined library. So typically on the order of millions or billions of molecules, when in the case of proteins, which is our focus, your search space is on the order of 10 to the 130th for proteins that are just 100 amino acids long. So just 100 residues long. These are very small proteins. What we believe that we are is the expert tailor customizing de novo drug designs to meet any product requirements. So that means that we can take across multiple objectives, so binding uh, potency, you know, off-target specificity, as well as solubility and all of these things, we can custom design drugs to meet all of those requirements simultaneously. And we believe that at least someday, we'll be able to do this in a total of two weeks from lead design or from target ID to preclinical in two weeks. If you can imagine it, we can design it. We like to say that uh, as an example of this, we had a vendor who liked, who was doing flow synthesis, chemical flow synthesis of proteins, and their machine just really liked alpha helices. And at the time we were outputting beta sheets and loops and all of this. Overnight, in just a few lines of code, we changed our system to output alpha helices. And lo and behold, in the morning, we were able to output alpha body structures with just three alpha helices. Our product is a product called Apollo. I'm gonna introduce you to the concept of Apollo and then I'll show you Apollo. So here, meet Apollo, the Ordeos protein design engine. This is Apollo learning to speak the language of proteins. She studies databases like Uniref, like PFAM, like ProCyte, and she looks at combinations, bigrams, trigrams of amino acids to learn the language of structure, the language of function, the language of physiochemical properties. Along the way, she has an adversary. So she has someone saying, that looks fake, that looks real, that looks fake, that looks real. And so she fails until she starts fooling the adversary. At that point, she's ready to generate novel sequences. Once she does this, she lifts some weights and she starts looking at protein 3D structure. With the advent of DeepMind's AlphaFold 2, as well as other structure prediction tools, she has a vast database available to her and she has the ability to decompose proteins and learn deeply about what makes a solid structure. Finally, she combines all of this together in a system similar to the way that Tesla evaluates its driving behavior to output things like isoelectric point, immunogenicity, solubility, all of these. That means that with one network, we can go from previously from a sequence or structure to all of the opposite sequence and structure, as well as all these properties. Or we can sample and generate completely novel therapeutics from this. Eventually, she starts playing a little game of tennis with herself, where she says, try protein X. And then the other Apollo says, well, you know, it failed the aggregation assay, try again. This is the same technology that Google uses for, to play breakout, chess, Starcraft, and it all happens in silico, meaning you never have to break the plane to in vitro. We've started with some early properties that we are confident in, and we can grow these the more access we have to in vitro. Another opportunity here is optimization station, where uh, just like Lucy and Ethel were at the conveyor belt, Apollo uh, plays with her friend at the conveyor belt, changes residue by residue, manipulates each one to search the functional landscape and the, and the optimization landscape of this protein to get to the best possible result. As I said, this product is ready. It's, it's in market currently. It's being used um, by our end users to develop drugs for our partners. This is a dashboard view that just shows you overall the types of experiments that we're running and some values. This is an actual run of a HER2 positive breast cancer program uh, where we are designing mini proteins between 50 and 150 amino acids. Uh, specifically here, we're looking for 50 to 90. And what this shows you is over time, an increase in differential binding, meaning the difference between on-target binding and off-target. 
So in something like HER2 positive breast cancer, you have cardiotoxicity, you might worry about off target effects. So we're trying to minimize that while maximizing the on target efficacy. Similarly, as I mentioned, we can do optimization, meaning that we can take a known scaffold, a known structure, and manipulate it just so, so that we increase the binding, we increase the solubility, we increase whatever it might be. And you get these beautiful multi-objective views at each stage. Uh, we, will, we are in the process of adding the three-dimensional alpha fold views and whatnot at the moment. The business model is a pipeline through partnerships. So this means that we focus on partners who have uh, patient-first disease platforms, rapid prototyping, humanoid models, as well as preclinical development and IND filing. In the case of Viant, for instance, they're providing the target ID and validation, they're providing the organoid models and the mice, and we're providing the lead. We work with our partners to drive towards IND as quickly as possible to then sell off our IND to pharma. As I mentioned, Viant Bio, so Viant, formerly known as Cancer Genetics, now the owner of Stemonics, publicly traded company. This is what we're building with them. This is our Cerberus project. And they are providing people, partnerships, process, and we're providing the technology to drive towards a repeatable pipeline for drug discovery. That includes accelerated and agnostic drug discovery across multiple therapeutic assets with rapid response to therapeutic needs in assets that are targeted to multiple genetic biomarkers that are de-risked based using our technology and using human biology and reduce negative immune response through our technology as well. So David, can I, can I ask you to pause one second? Yes, sir. Because I just think this might be helpful. Uh, the delta or the, the, the contrast between how it normally takes time-wise and money-wise and how your technology reduces that so dramatically is pretty dramatic, right? So it's, it's a, there's a big difference. Um, would you say that that's largely because of the Apollo's AI learning ability? Like these are, you know, current buzzwords that everybody thinks is going to work, but is that, is that the essence of it? Yes, so previously this was done based on physical principles, based on um, solving differential equations, right? I mean, deep, deep physics. But there's only so much that we've observed and so there's only so much that you can see with the known uh, methods. Simulation is incredibly expensive. So even if you were to simulate these things using molecular dynamics, it's a very costly process that takes a lot of time. So what we're able to do is look through this vast growth in public data sets, as well as some private data sets that we've gotten our hands on and learn to fill in the gaps. So we're not having to exactly solve these systems. We can get approximately there fast enough that we can keep iterating. So it's some combination of something similar to simulation with this inference that the AI has learned that can get you to traverse the landscape of optimality um, in very short periods of time. And then following that logic, would quantum computing compress it down to you know, two days instead of three weeks? And I'm using the wrong numbers, get my point though. Uh, I do get your point. It's a little difficult to talk about quantum computing because it's a, it's a buzzword, but the hardware is not there yet, right? So. We have some time before the hardware is truly effective. That being said, uh, one of my senior engineers was chosen just for that purpose. He has a, a vast background in quantum physics and quantum computing, and uh, that is on our timeline of next steps. Basically, we've uh, in the multi-scale approach where you look at whole protein connecting with whole protein, and then you look at residue connects to residue, and then you look at binding interface connecting to binding interface, the addition of quantum would be very important to the smallest scale but there's a marginal return to these things, right? So we're uh, factoring that later in our process so that we can master the rest first. Yeah, so, and forgive me for uh, doing this at this juncture, but I think it would be helpful in that your AI is filling in the gaps that because you don't have to be precise with the gaps and now you've got an outcome. Have you been able to demonstrate that that outcome 
is correct? It's funny that you mentioned that, Arthur. So he did. I didn't set this up, guys. I swear. Right? <laughs> So this is, these are some example results um, from that program that I mentioned in HER2 positive breast cancer. This is entirely in silico. We've done some of this in vitro and we have the tests that we're awaiting results from within weeks. So the standard of care Progetta is a $3.2 billion a year asset and it is a large antibody. So this typical Y shape that we're familiar with in antibodies, it's about hundred kilodaltons in size. Using third-party tools that demonstrate docking, we achieved equivalent docking performance in a molecule that's 93% smaller. Now, why is that important? Because tumor penetration is actually a major problem of Progetta and Herceptin and similar. So that means that the antibodies can get the outside of the tumor, but by the time they make it to the center, the immune system has figured out a way to defend the body against that antibody, or the, I should say defend the tumor against that antibody, which means you never get the whole tumor out, and our molecules will be able to penetrate deep and get to that core of that tumor faster. Now, in early tests, we've synthesized these, meaning that we've gone from digital bits to physical atoms and from the two-letter binary code to the 20-letter amino acid code. These were synthesized with flow chemistry, with high purity and structural soundness, uh, as well as very little, if any, aggregation. Unfortunately, the uh, in vitro tests following that were mishandled by a partner. So we are redoing that at the, mo at the moment and we'll have those results shortly. And you're optimistic, obviously. We're tremendously optimistic, 100%. And even if those results are not optimistic, we have another set of results coming in from our collaboration with TWIST. Speaking of those bulky, heavy antibodies, uh, we did an antibody affinity maturation, meaning that we optimized sets of antibodies for COVID, and we expect to get those results hopefully by JP Morgan as well. Super cool. Yeah. Speaking of twists, we're not just science, uh, we're also business. So we've proven traction from idea to a million dollars in revenue run rate in just 18 months. We've only been around since it's December of 2019, um, and we hit that milestone midway this year. That came from these two engagement models, most of which is co-development and a small portion is time and resources. But with Viant Bio and similar, the co-development comes with a quarter million to $5 million upfront payment, as well as five to $10 million milestones and percentage of commercial sales. At our current calculation, we believe that this amounts to a $30 million risk-adjusted net present value for any given asset. And by any given asset, I of course mean any typical asset, something like a Herceptin, something like um, a TNF alpha, on, on average, it amounts to about 30 million. The time and resources we typically do either as a proof of concept, so an MVP with someone like Twist, or as a development program for our partner. So Viant Bio, their uh, child company, Stemonix, is looking to increase the efficacy of their drug development program. They're looking to build some AI into that, and we've been supporting them for several months in developing that technology for them. As I mentioned, we are on a mission to design more drugs, uh, but also to cut development times in half. Uh, this is my co-founder, Dr. Ulo Palm, who said the AI-based drug design engine, or DEOS, is developed as a method with game-changing potential. Now, I know he's my co-founder, but he's also the current chief medical officer of Vaccinity and is regarded as one of the top 20 names in clinical trial development. Our favorite quote is, you accomplished in four days what took us two years to accomplish. This was in a program with the Medical University of South Carolina to take a set of about 1,000 targets, possible targets, in the epithelial mesenchymal transition in breast cancer and reduce that down to the most likely suspect. We were able to use causal modeling, um, time series analysis of RNA-seq and gene regulatory networks to reduce that thousand down to two that were the, the prime suspects. If they had done that via in vitro methods, assuming that they could get to the same result, it would take them about two years. This is a sampling of some of our pipeline, including HER2 um, positive cancer, which where we're focusing on uh, cholangiocarcinoma, the rare disease, um, as well as 
those proprietary targets in metastasis, COVID, and AML, where we're looking at CLL1. Most people like to ask us, why would you choose HER2? It's a red ocean. And my answer is, we chose it because it's a red ocean. And by that, I mean, we need data for AI. There's a plethora of data in HER2. There are wonderful baselines to choose to outperform. And that gives us a starting point as a proof of this factory that can then spit out drugs on a ridiculous timeline at any given time. In terms of the money side, the target market, um, we consider the TAM to be the global protein therapeutics market. Why do we consider it that? Because we can substitute our mini proteins, our 50 to 150 amino acid mini proteins for any antibody on the market. So we can directly compete in that space, providing a superior alternative. Not to mention because of the size, we can also create binders that are a portion of a cell therapy. So think CAR-T, CAR-NK, we can be a part of that program. Now our obtainable market is set based on the net present value of these assets, 10 programs, which we believe will be on the small side. Uh, this is tremendously scalable. So the, the resources scale linearly in the cloud. Um, it, it's just a matter of duplicating the, the software and running a new program. So we should be able to take on a number of programs at any given time without much of a scale of labor. In review, we are a molecular native team. So uh, everyone on my company can speak both bio and AI. With a robust advisory board, we were founded in December of 2019. We are located in Hudson Yards, New York City. We've been validated and commercialized. I have personally invested about $5 million to date with angels investing another million. We're generating revenue through several programs and partnerships and pipeline. And we have 20 employees, most of which are located in New York, but are dispersed internationally across Romania, um, Ireland, Greece, and Algeria. This is a sample of our leadership team, including myself and Zue, who are on the call now, Matthias Denek, who is our director of engineering and had a previous startup in NLP and speech synthesis, and Josh Friedman, a postdoc graduate of the famed David Baker in protein design. Our board consists of myself and Ulo Palm, uh, who I have mentioned previously and who is now the CMO of Xfinity. Our advisory council is made up of some large names in AI, such as the head of causal and predictive analytics at Novartis, Bulent Kazilton, as well as uh, the industry expert Ken Getz, uh, among others. We are seeking $3 million in funding to expand our biotech partnerships, generate more in vitro proof, deliver on our R&D roadmap, and bolster our IP portfolio through patent filing. These funds will help to secure two to three new partnerships, at least in six months time, increasing Ordeos revenue run rate to $5 million by 2023. And we're looking at investors who share our vision of delivering better drugs through continuous feedback and who are dedicated to supporting our commercial and R&D strategy. With that, I hope you all have an interest in investing in the next generation of life-saving drugs. Is, is it too uh, early to assign a valuation and is the investment in the typical is typically done in a convertible note to work the valuation question or? So at this specific point in time, we're working those details. What I will say is that I am looking to give away between 20 and 30% of the company for that 3 million. So our valuation is not out of this world, if that makes any sense. We're looking for a lead investor to set that valuation. We are talking to a number of VCs at the moment, um, but if a family office or an angel group is interested in speaking with us, we're happy to engage and pursue options there. We're not opposed to doing a, a convertible note in the, meet, in the interim, um, but those terms are being set at the moment. Yeah. Oftentimes when this type of, I'm going to call it disruption, but it, only because it compresses the time frame and the money involved, is there been pushback from the incumbents? Well, let me ask it differently. Why wouldn't somebody engage you if they're in the process of developing drugs? 
they look for a lot of in vitro proof a lot of in vitro proof and that's why this extension is mainly focused on getting more in vitro proof on our side there are a number of competitors which we haven't spoken about the competitive landscape um, if you look at the ai and drug discovery space it's more than 200 companies however the majority of them are focused on small molecules which we do not work with outside of our time and materials engagements the few that are in protein there are about 10 of them four or five of which are active and those are about the same stage that we are. They have engaged with small pharma, maybe one or two large cap, um, and are just building out their proof now. But this is a huge shift in thinking, especially the de novo view, because the common logic is that you start from a scaffold that works and you tweak to make it fit, to make it compromise to your goal. What we're saying is, no, we're going to design this residue by residue. And that hurts people's brains sometimes uh, but it's our mission to set that up uh, with proof and for those who are in the know why would that hurt their brain it's hard enough to make a scaffold work it's hard enough to make a protein fold i mean until this year we didn't know the mechanism of folding or we, we couldn't fully explain the mechanism of folding and you know it used to take thousands of computers months to fold a protein now it takes 10 minutes right. so i think the jump in in um in understanding the jump in time scale has been tremendous over this past these past two decades it's the exact th same thing that's happening in genomics where the human genome project uh, i forget the number but i believe it's a hundred million dollars for the first genome and now it costs a hundred bucks i know right <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> Yeah, so, right. it's exactly what's happening there yeah all right so we have a question what's your burn rate i assume your revenue does not cover your monthly expenses so our burn rate is on the order of a quarter million a month that's because of our large staff and that's because of cloud compute now we're doing some interesting things with cloud compute right now we're moving a, a very small experimental setup on premises we also just entered into an agreement yesterday with google where we will be uh, committing to use their services for a time and that will reduce our expenditure. But we spend, we have spent in the past up to $80,000 a month on compute. We've gotten that down to about 40,000 and we believe that we can reduce that even further. Um, our staff is made up of mostly mid-level staff that are quite valuable for their pay um, with some senior staff. Uh, but I believe that that burn rate is acceptable frankly for the stage that we're at and how are you covering that uh out of that you know five million that i mentioned that i put in as well as continuing uh input from myself and uh, a few choice angels uh we're managing it right now but the hope is that this extension the extension i believe is set up to to run us a year with absolutely no revenue where we already have at least a million dollars on the books for next year, uh, as well as potential for much more than that. Before the call, you mentioned something, I think, uh, if I understood it. Uh, is this the type of thing that non dilutive capital from NAI, NIH or that sort of thing applies? Yes. So we are adjusting our um, we're adjusting our submission to the NCI at the moment which would be about a $350,000 grant. We're also looking at other grant opportunities, both with academia and alone. So both STTR and SBIR. Yeah. And you don't have to tell us who they are, but thus far, the angels, is there a, a profile of those angels that would be helpful in us understanding why they're interested in, in why they voted with their checkbook? Yes, typically those that have either been afflicted by disease or have loved one who have been deeply afflicted by disease and want to see this uh, transformation happen faster. If, you know, a close friend of mine, his wife suffered from breast cancer twice. Uh, she has the BRCA gene and she had to go through this terrible process. The drugs that we have on market are incredibly detrimental to the human body. Frankly, I mean, it first of all, you, beat you up pretty bad, right? Chemo is awful to begin with, and the drugs yeah. themselves make you, uh, you know, 
you're happy to be alive once you're alive, but it's a hell of a process, right? Yeah. Um, our drugs are designed to make that better, to save some of that suffering, but still get to the root of disease. And I think that's where the angels who have invested have wanted to vote with their checkbook. Yeah, fair enough. What's the uh, uh, your time frame for this round? We're looking to close it in January. Uh, that could push a month later, but we're looking to close it in January. And if you were to suggest to the folks on the call here and for those who they also they may know who uh, fit that profile as an angel investor, is there, uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, a year from now, what you see this looking like? Yes. So uh, thank you for bringing me to my backup slides. So <laughs> um, first of all, I think the feedback that we've been getting from investors is that they're interested in having that in vitro in-house. So we have made the conscious to choice to streamline our focus on AI, and we've made tremendous progress by doing that. Now is the time where we can wrap in a protein expression or protein synthesis company, perhaps an in vitro model co, someone that has these humanoid models. And of course, if I haven't mentioned this, the reason for choosing human organoid models is that the mouse model is imperfect. So we're getting into the human system as early as possible to um, de-risk that phase one and phase two of clinical trials. And that would look like Ordeos Bio, not just Ordeos, but Ordeos Bio. Yeah. Um, in terms of our cash and burn, uh, this is our forecasted versus actual revenues for 2020 and 2021. It was a hundred times increase from 2020 to 2021. And we outperformed our forecast by uh, 25%. Our forecasts show about a $4 million revenue in 2022 and about a $10 million revenue in 2023 through growing partnerships. Our expenses have actually decreased uh, because of, I don't know, experience. Um, in 2020, there was this linear increase to our expenses. In 2021, there's only been a decrease. Um, and what that looks like a year from now, the extension makes up this seed extension that will fill us with $3 million of funding. However, these convertible notes that we do have out, they are uh, triggered at a $10 million raise, their conversion trigger, the $10 million raise before September 30th of 2023. That means that the minute that we get this extension, we're gonna be driving towards all of the evidence that we need in order to um, raise that seed capital and be confident in that seed capital uh, that will bring in more preferred shares uh, and also trigger that convertible to convert. And then in terms of how you get out of this thing, uh, the possible exits are through either our treatments in the sense that we can spin off assets at any given time. So any of these INDs, we can roll them up into an SPV and exit that way, or through acquisition. So for instance, if we did talk to one of our partners that is more CRO-like, they may be interested in simply acquiring their AI partner. And then finally, through public offering. I mean, we're all familiar with the SPAC market that boomed and busted. Um, but whether through a SPAC or through an IPO, there's uh, a history and there is precedent for a company like ours to go public. And the IP is supported by trade secrets or, or patents? At this very moment in time, uh, it is Coca-Cola. So we have combined many, many processes in a unique way and uh, it's Coca-Cola. That being said, we have patentable material that we are just looking for the money to pay the patent lawyers, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, to, yeah. to build that IP moat. Yeah, super interesting. Well, you, uh, I've seen a million of these, so I can say you've covered everything very well. Um, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, and like I said, we're gonna make sure everybody gets in direct in touch with you. And the, the folks in the audience feel free to, to do that once we connect everybody. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, to add uh, to the group here? Uh, just in the discussion of, I think I acknowledge some of our potential weaknesses and that we are only an AI company, so to speak, um, as well as our lack of quantum. But there are 
paths in place. So the quantum, like I mentioned, we have uh, the, the staff, it's not just the one person, several on our team have a background in quantum and can, can build that out. And the Ordeos Protein Co. Model Co. business, we're in talks with several groups to see how we can best move that forward. Um, so I suppose I, I've covered everything that I would want an investor to uh, be aware of. And I'm also an open book, so please feel free to get in contact and uh, set up a meeting with me. Of the, of the 10 competitors, five of which are active, are there's there's because of the size of the obtainable market just by itself, there's plenty of room for multiple ways to do this, right? The size of the market allows us to have different disease foci and different modality focuses. So that means, uh, actually, if I can pull this up super fast, um, one of the competitors just got confirmation that we're on to the right thing, right? So they just did their seed. And as soon as I can open. Yeah, take your time. Um, where did that go? There. So uh, these competitors, that one that I'm mentioning is Nabla Bio, and they are out of Boston, and they have the backing of George Church and Mohammed Al Karashi. They raised an $11 million seed. If we talk about their technology, they do one of the things that we do, which is representation learning. They also claim to have a multi multiplexed high throughput antibody assay. I'm not certain what this is. I'm not certain if this is in vitro or in silico. They uh, don't make that clear. There are about seven people, so we've got the size advantage, but that's Nabla. And that was a successful raise from Costla Ventures, Zeta, and 50 years. Menton AI and Protein Cure, they've both raised this $4 million seed about three years ago, which is equivalent, if you think, to the $6 million that I've put in, or that myself and Angels have put in. And Menton has this focus on macro, macro cyclic proteins, which means they're focusing on oral delivery of proteins. They, have, they use quantum algorithms. You know, it's up for discussion how important those quantum algorithms are or how effective they are. And Protein Cure is doing similarly, they're focusing on smaller than 100 amino acids, and they're also taking a more commercial approach. So they've partnered with AstraZeneca and Daichi Sankyo. Yeah. Each have 19 people. Protein Cure is advised by the CEO of AtomWise. Um, but I'm seeing a very similar story, right? Even in terms of funding, in terms of speed and time and approach, there's a very similar story, but the market is so large and there are so many different ways to approach this, but I don't see them as true competition. I see them as other offerings in adjacent spaces. And uh, like you said, validating what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Well, that was uh, very, very helpful. Um, and I even understood part of it. So, Excellent. yeah. Uh, so for the group, we're going to make sure everybody's in touch. Uh, and like I said, feel free to communicate directly. Uh, we don't stand in the way of that. And uh, uh, if, again, anybody in your world or your community is interested in hearing more, feel free to connect them as well. And, and uh, David, thank you for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for putting this together. You're very welcome. And then we'll be in touch uh, shortly. Great. Until next time, thank you all for sharing the only thing you can't make more of, and that's your time. Take care. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye-bye.